right, now that you have an idea of what accuracy and precision is, let's take a look at a, a calculation. Um, we're really not going to do any sort of mathematical calculations regarding precision other than that I'm going to be looking at your data and analyzing whether it's precise or not. We're going to focus on accuracy. As I said before, accuracy is measured using the percent error equation. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to have a very low percent error. And an acceptable value for the percent error should be anything between zero and 5%. Now that's accepted by, that would be an acceptable lab report. Okay, you want to make sure that you have no more than 5% error. Um, again, that has to do with the fact that, you know, thinking, wait, science, it shouldn't have any error, right? It's science. Well, keep in mind, significant figures are always going to throw error in our results. And we're going to actually look at this later in, in quantum mechanics and talk about error and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, and see how it has an effect. But anyway, for now, zero to five is acceptable. Now, I'm not going to hold you to that kind of thing in our class, but you really want to shoot for zero to five. Now, zero doesn't mean that you're any better than somebody with three and a half percent. This is just random luck that you get in between zero and five. Anything outside of five percent is getting sloppy science, okay? So we want to make sure that we stay within that zero to five, okay? So don't go around going, oh, look at me, I got a zero percent error. It's just random luck that you got that, okay? All right, so um, as I said before, the experimental is your measurement. So that's the measurement that you're going to make in the laboratory. So that all has to come from your data, okay? So that's your measurements. These are going to come from some sort of resource or table or something some sort of resource. You're going to have to look it up on the internet. Um, you're going to have to look it up in your book um, or somewhere else. So that's going to come from uh, a table or some sort of resource. Okay, That is the expected quantity that you have in here. So experimental, subtracting uh, you know, the expected. Now one thing about percent error, because they're doing subtraction here, some people will do, some scientists, some chemistry teachers, will put an absolute value in here. Okay, eh, it's fine. I get what they're doing. They don't. We don't want the negative. But I personally don't like that. I, I like the negative. So your percent error can be positive or it can be negative. The reason I like that is because if it's positive, then I know that my experimental measurement, my measurement, was bigger than what's expected. If it were negative, then I would know that my measurement were less than the expected. So this is really valuable information that it can tell you about what you need to do when you go back and look at it. All right. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, some example data that is. Alright, so let's say we have a student here that's doing an experiment and they are trying to calculate the density of uh, aluminum. Okay, now here's the actual density. So this would be the expected amount. So that's what we would expect it to be. And to be honest, in your labs, you're not really doing experiments. You guys are doing labs. You're not Experiments will be unknown. What we're doing is we're just practicing skills and comparing it to the known things that scientists have already figured out. You're not going to discover new things in here, unfortunately. If you do, let me know because we can make some money on that. But for now, what we're doing is we're really looking at comparing our data, our calculations, our measurements to actual accepted things. So you're going to see a lot of this expected stuff. All right, so this is what it should be. We take a look at student A. Student A's data for four trials. 3.21, 3.31, so on. Very precise. That data all looks very similar, right? They're all pretty close to each other. But the level of accuracy is not quite there. And what we can do, and to figure this out, what we want to look at is the average. So what we can do is we can say student A's um, average data, right? So this is what you're going to do. When you guys are doing a lab and you have four or five trials, we're not going to look at each one individually. What we do is we average all of those trials. So what we're going to do is, because each trial was exactly the same, you didn't do anything different for trial one than you did for trial four, we're going to add them up and divide by four. When you do that, you get 3.275 grams per milliliter. Okay, So that would be the average value for student A's work. Now again, don't forget about significant figures. We're going to have to round this to the correct number of significant figures. And based on the fact that we're at these, this decimal point here, we're going to go ahead and divide that out by th with three significant figures, my final answer. So I should end up with 3.23 um, uh, grams per milliliter. If you're still having questions on that, please ask. Because significant figures can be a little crazy in the beginning. So please make sure you get some help on that, on that in class. All right, so that's my average value. Obviously, it's not a, not close to the two point. Well, I guess it's close. It's it's closer than four, so it's doing a little bit better here. Right, so let's figure out how far off the mark that student is, and that's where we do our percent error. Okay, so we'll do our percent error calculation here, which would be the uh, experimental, which is what we hear 
with a student measured. So this is from the experiment, from what they, they determined. So 3.23 grams per milliliter minus the expected. Okay, so we expected that to be 2.70 grams per milliliter. I'm going to divide that all out um, by 2.70 grams per milliliter. When we do this, we do the subtraction, what you're going to end up with is a value of 0.53 grams per milliliter, okay, over 2.70 grams per milliliter. So I, I haven't done the math. I'm just doing it step by step here. The reason I'm doing this is to show you some more with the significant figure. So I'm significant to the de second decimal place to the second decimal place. Since I'm subtracting, I have to round this to the second decimal place, which is what it happens to do when I do the subtraction. So three significant figures, three significant figures, I now have two significant figures in this number. Okay, so by doing the subtraction, I've actually lost some significant figures. Here I still have three significant figures in the bottom number. Okay, so I'm using my rules, applying the rules for subtraction here to get that number here. Now I'm going to follow my rules for multiplying and dividing. And when I divide, I have to count the number of significant figures. Since I have two significant figures here, I have to put two in my final answer. So when I do the calculation, I get 19.629. Uh, well, I can't round there because I have to do three significant figures. And three significant figures ends on one, two, three on the six. Okay, so if I'm at, oh, I'm sorry, not three significant figures, I need two. So we actually have to round it at the nine. Okay, so two significant figures controls the final significant figures in the answer. So I use the six to round this up to a 20, and I have to put a decimal here because I want to show that this is a significant. This is the hardest one, guys. I know that these are confusing. Are those trailing zeros? And it's why I chose this to kind of make it look, give you an example of this. All right, so because the answer is 20, if I don't put the decimal here, then it's just 20 without a decimal. That's one significant figure. I need to have two significant figures. I need to show that that zero is significant by putting the decimal there. And then I can put my percentage. So 20% error in that student's work. Okay, that's beyond the 5% the I had talked about in the beginning. So yeah, in the real world scientific community, that wouldn't be acceptable. But in this class, that would be totally fine. Okay, so hopefully it's a good review of significant figures and hopefully also gives you an idea of how to actually use numbers with accuracy uh, and also for determining precision. But Okay, so thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you later.